Are you curious about which foods are rotting in your colon? Understanding this process can reveal fascinating insights into our digestion and the impact of different foods on our bodies. Many people believe that red meat rots in our colon, but this is actually a myth perpetuated by vegan influencers. Meat is digested and absorbed before it even reaches the colon. What really happens in our colon has more to do with the fermentation of certain foods. This is a natural process where bacteria in the colon break down the food. This process produces gas and bloating. Foods that undergo fermentation in the colon are primarily plant-based and high in fiber. These include beans, whole grains, certain vegetables, and some fruits. It's these foods rather than meat that are rotting in our colon. So let's delve into the foods that actually rot in your colon. It's a fascinating journey that might change the way you look at your plate. There are several foods that ferment in the colon. Let's explore them. Beans and legumes, such as lentils and chickpeas, are rich in fiber and resistant starches. These components resist digestion in the small intestine and, once in the colon, are fermented by bacteria, releasing gas. Similarly, wheat and whole grains are packed with fibers that bypass digestion in the stomach and small intestine, leading to fermentation upon reaching the colon. This process is not exclusive to these foods though. Cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, and cauliflower also join the list. They're brimming with fiber and sulfur-containing compounds, both of which can ferment in the colon, often causing gas and bloating. Onions and garlic, though flavorful additions to many dishes, contain fructans. These carbohydrates aren't entirely digested in the small intestine, leading to their fermentation and subsequent gas production in the colon. For those with lactose intolerance, dairy products can ferment in the colon as the lactose they contain isn't sufficiently broken down. This can lead to an uncomfortable bloating sensation and associated gas. High FODMAP fruits, like apples, pears, and cherries, contain fermentable sugars that in sensitive individuals can cause gas production. Likewise, oats and other high-fiber foods can ferment in the colon, particularly if you're not accustomed to a high-fiber diet. Processed foods, typically high in sugar and low in fiber, can disrupt the bacterial balance in your gut leading to increased fermentation and gas. Sugar alcohols like sorbitol and xylitol, often found in sugar-free candies and gum, can also ferment in the colon, resulting in gas and bloating. Lastly, some artificial sweeteners can be poorly absorbed, leading to their fermentation in the colon and contributing to digestive discomfort. So, from beans and grains to fruits and sweeteners, a variety of foods can ferment in the colon. Now, you may wonder, is fermentation in the colon a bad thing? You might be thinking that fermentation in the colon sounds like a bad thing, right? Well, let's delve into this a bit more. Yes, when foods ferment in the colon, they produce gas, which can often carry an unpleasant odor. But it's not inherently a bad thing. You see, our colons house trillions of bacteria, some good, some not so good. This is what we call our gut microbiota. However, the balance between these good and bad bacteria is delicate, and our diet can greatly influence this. So, if you've noticed some smelly flatulence, it might be due to the foods you're eating. The foods we eat can significantly affect the amount of gas we produce. Let's talk about that. A diet high in beans, whole grains, vegetables, and fruits can increase fermentation in the colon. This is due to their high fiber content and certain types of carbohydrates that are not fully digested in the small intestine. When these undigested particles reach the colon, they ferment, leading to gas production. Now let's shift gears and talk about the carnivore diet. This diet primarily includes meat and eggs, which are fully digested before they reach the colon, eliminating the chance for fermentation. Many people following this diet have reported experiencing less flatulence and odor. This is because there is less material available in the colon to ferment and produce gas. So, the foods we choose to eat can have a big impact on our digestive health. It's interesting to see how our diet can influence our gut health, isn't it? As we've seen, it's not the meat that rots in your colon, but certain other foods that ferment. Understanding how different foods affect our gut health is crucial. Some of these foods, like beans and whole grains, are generally healthy and packed with nutrients. However, they can cause discomfort due to fermentation in the colon. If you often experience gas or bloating, it might be worth considering these factors and adjusting your diet accordingly. Knowing which foods can cause fermentation in your colon is the first step in managing your gut health. The next time someone tells you that meat rots in your colon, you'll know better. It's actually the beans, wheat, and other foods that ferment, causing gas and odor. 
Before we wrap up, I want to take a moment to encourage you to engage with the channel. If you found this video interesting and learned something new, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. This helps us reach more like-minded individuals who are passionate about understanding their bodies better. Also, I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Have you ever experienced discomfort after eating certain foods? Have you found certain dietary changes to be beneficial? Share your experiences in the comments below. Your insights could be helpful to others in our community who are also trying to manage their gut health. And if you know someone who might benefit from this information, don't hesitate to share this video with them. Knowledge is power, and sharing it can make a real difference in someone's life. Lastly, if you have any topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, let us know. We're always eager to explore new subjects and provide you with the most accurate, up-to-date information. Thanks for your support, and until next time, keep exploring your body and its fascinating functions.